Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up 2D collision objects. And we will be using rigid bodies as well as static bodies. And I'll also be going over how to set up different gravity areas for things like areas where you want to flip the gravity or for like a planet where you might want a gravitational pull. I'll show you how to set up all that fun stuff in this video. So the first thing we're going to look at is the simulation I've set up. So if I run the game, we have some boxes and they'll basically just drop and these can obviously be interacted with in game and pushed around as physical objects. Now the setup for this crate is a rigid body 2D node and we're actually gonna create our own one of these. So I'm gonna make a new scene. We're gonna select other node and I'm gonna search for rigid body 2D and I'm gonna create a ball. So I'm gonna rename this to ball and then we are going to need a collision shape. But first let's add a sprite. So I'm gonna select sprite, drag in my ball texture Zoom in here a bit, and now I can add a collision shape as a child of the ball, so we're going to do that as well. And in the shape property, I'm going to define a new circle and just set it to the size of the ball. And we're going to save this as a scene, and then if I go back into my main world, I can go into my objects folder and instance this new ball. Duplicate this a couple times, and then go ahead and run my simulation, working correctly. So that's pretty cool, but what if you wanted to add different materials and different weights and we could add a bounce to the ball and you can do this all through a property in the rigid body so if we go back to the ball i'm going to select my rigid body and then on the right hand side i'm going to go over to the physics material override and i can actually select this and then create a new physics material and inside of here i can set properties like the friction the roughness and the bounce we can also set this to be absorbent so it absorbs the impact of external collisions but we're just going to look at the bounce property for now so for this ball i'm going to set it to 0.8 and the maximum value for this is one. One being the bounciest and not ever stopping its bounce. But if we set it to point 0.8 and we bounce the ball, it will eventually come to a stop. So I'm gonna save this and then go back and run the game. And we'll see how this looks. So we have some balls, they can bounce around and they act pretty good. Now they are a bit heavy and that is because the mass is automatically set to one. So if we change the mass a bit, maybe we set it to 0.4 and we run this again, you can see how this immediately affects the balls and they bounce a bit more now. All these values can be edited to create your desired outcome for your physics. And you can also change the gravity of the entire project by going up to your project settings and then scrolling down to the physics and going to 2D and then simply change the gravity of your entire project. So if I wanted to increase it, I would set it to something like 1200. You can also change the direction of the gravity, which is obviously defaulting to downward. But if we wanted to make the gravity reversed, we would simply set the direction to negative one on the Y axis. And now running the simulation, all of the objects would move up towards the ceiling. Now, what if you wanted to only affect the gravity in specific areas? So I'm going to reset the gravity back to what it was before, and we're going to look at changing the gravity in a specific area. So on the left hand side in my tree view, I'm going to collapse the objects and I have this gravity node. Now, the first example is a gravity flip. And this will basically in this area, let me move this out of the way in this area, which I've defined, the gravity will be reversed. And we can create this really easily. I'm actually gonna delete this just so I can walk you guys through it. But all you would need to do is add an area 2D node. And we are gonna drag this where we want it, maybe right here. And then as a child of this area 2D, we simply add a collision shape and create a new rectangle shape inside of here. And then we just set the area we want it to cover like so. And then back on the area 2D node, we go into the gravity folder and where it says space override, we're gonna set that to replace. And we're gonna set the direction to up, which would be negative one. And the amount of gravity we're gonna apply in this area is going to be 980 which is the project's default. So if I go ahead and run this, any objects that land in this area will basically be launched up until they're outside and obviously they keep just falling into it and they stay above and we can visualize this easier if we go to debug 
and enable visible collision shapes. Go ahead and run this again, and you can kind of see what's going on in a more in-depth view. Now, the last example I set up is creating a planet with a gravitational pull, and this will account for like orbital velocity and all that fun stuff. Now for the planet, I have created this entire setup, but I'm going to delete this and walk you guys through how to do it on your own. So to create this planet, we're going to add a new static body 2D. And static body 2Ds are kind of like rigid bodies, except they do not simulate physics. So rigid bodies will be able to collide with static bodies and be pushed by them, but a static body will not be affected by gravity and it will not be able to actually be pushed by other objects. So this is perfect for the planet base. So I'm going to rename this to planets. And then as a child of this, we will add a sprite and I'm going to drag in the ball texture once again, um, just so we can visualize that this is actually the planet. I'm going to go into visibility and just self modulate this a bit. And then I'm going to add the collision shape and set the shape to cover the entire planet. And then after this, we can add the area 2D as a child of the static body. And this will obviously affect our physics. And then another collision shape for the area which we are going to be affecting. So this will be a circle, right, for the gravitational pull. And this one will be pretty big. So I'm going to make it about this big. And then once again, in the area 2D node, we're going to go into the gravity tab. Space override is going to be replace. And then we're going to set the point property equal to true. And we're going to say the point center is going to be at zero, zero. And the point unit distance, this basically defines how far away from the center of our area that the gravity is at 100%. So since our planet is pretty small, we really don't have to worry about this. But if your planet was larger, you would want to set this distance up so that the surface of the area would be at 100% gravity on the surface of the planet. And this will kind of just adjust the pull to reflect your values a bit more conveniently. But we're not going to change that and then we can also change the gravity once again and I'm going to reduce this to 500. Now let's just place the planets over here and if I go ahead and run this simulation you can see that our objects will now get pulled towards the planet if they are within this range and this is pretty neat and once again this is really good for like outer space games if we were to set the default gravity to have no direction. This would be similar to outer space and stuff would just float unless it was acted upon by a area that would pull it towards the object, of course. But that's going to do it for this video. If you did learn anything new or you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing as it does help the channel out a ton. And if you need any help with any coding problems or Godot specific problems, make sure to join the Discord server, which I've linked in the description, and I'll try to help you out there. Also, if this kind of physics stuff interests you and you'd like to see how you can push objects with the player, make sure to drop a comment and I'll be working on that video next if there is enough interest. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.